Today in this 2017 Audi SQ5, we will be having a look at and showing you how to install the Draw Tight Class 3 trailer hitch receiver, part number 75940. Here's what our hitch looks like installed. First thing you'll notice about this hitch is that it's designed to work inside the factory cutout in the bumper, and it does that nicely with no trimming or modification required, so it does give us a nice clean look. Many of our customers on our website have said they've purchased this hitch for their Q5 or their SQ5 in order to use it with bike racks and cargo carriers, and they've all said it has worked great for them with plenty of clearance around the fascia and allows them to bring all their gear with them when they go on the road. One of the questions that we do get on our website is if the vehicle is equipped with backup sensors like this one, is that with a bike rack installed on the hitch, will the backup sensors be activated? And the answer is yes, but that's only when you have the vehicle in reverse, and that's because the bike rack will be right in front of the sensor and it's gonna set off the proximity warning. But when you're driving down the road, going straight and drive, you don't have to worry, there'll be no beeps or warnings or any alert messages on the dash. Everything will be just like normal. On the side of our receiver, you'll find two pinholes. The larger one closest to the front, that's your industry standard 5 8 of an inch diameter hitch pinhole. They use it with a pin and clip to secure your hitch mounted accessories. You can pick up a pin and clip separately on our website as part number PC3. This smaller hole here is for a J-pin stabilization device, and what that does is help take away the annoying shake, play, and rattle out of what's inserted into your receiver. We have one of those available separately as well. One thing that I really like about this hitch are our safety chain loops here. They're a plate style design that face down below the receiver and they're in front of our hitch pin. So if we have a large diameter safety chain like this one, we can easily clip on. We don't have to worry about any interference from our pin and clip and we can still easily remove. The end of our receiver, you'll find this nice collar that's welded on, and this gives us a really nice finished look on the back of our Audi. And it also helps improve the strength of the receiver opening. As far as weight capacities go, this hitch features a 750 pound max tongue weight rating, which is the amount forcing down, and a 5,000 pound max gross trailer weight rating, which is the amount it can pull. You will want to consult with the owner's manual of your Audi and not exceed what the vehicle's rated for. Go by whichever number is less. With our fascia off, this is what our hitch looks like installed. Now, while this may look like a very involved install, it's really not that bad. The hitch simply slides into the channel in our frame rail where our factory bumper beam was, and is secured with the factory bumper beam bolts. This is a lot easier than some of the other options out there for the SQ5. A lot of those, you have to do a bunch of drilling, trimming and cutting of the heat shield, lowering the exhaust, this is just a direct replacement for the factory bumper beam. And now for a few measurements to better assist you in choosing any hitch mount and accessory you may need, such as a ball mount, bike rack, or a cargo carrier, you're looking at about 14 and a quarter inches from the ground to the top of the two inch receiver opening, and about four inches from the center of the hitch pin hole to the most part of the back bumper. Now that we've got over some features, we'll show you how to get it installed. To begin our install, we're going to open our rear hatch. Now we'll remove our floor coverings. Now we can remove our threshold or scuff plate, however you want to call it. We'll do that just by lifting up on it. Once we pulled it up, we found that there's a sensor attached to our mechanism here that we need to unplug. There's a tab on each side. There's one just like this on the other side. We'll squeeze these together and pull to separate. And here are the tabs that you have to squeeze to pull the connector apart. With it unclipped, we can now set this aside. Now on both sides of our vehicle behind where our scuff plate was, we have this plastic covered hole right here. And deep inside there, there is a 10 millimeter nut on a stud, which helps hold our fascia in place. We need to remove these. So you'll need a 10 millimeter socket and an extension. And here's the nut once we remove it. Now at each corner of our hatch, we'll have a cargo hook just like this one, so four in total. We'll lift up on it, and we'll find two T30 torque screws that hold it in place. We need to remove these. And then you can lift up on the cargo hook and set it aside. 
Now we can remove our side rails. We'll just lift up on them and fold them forward and out of the way. Now we'll remove our driver's side interior panel and take out our spare tire air compressor. Now the foam tray that our compressor set in, there's these two nuts. We need to spin these off. As we spin them, it will start to work its way up. Then we can pull up and they'll pop off. They'll come up, then we can pull up and remove our panel. Behind where our styrofoam was that held in place our compressor, we have this long stud with a 10 millimeter nut on it. This helps hold the fascia in place on the corner or move this nut. Now on our passenger side, we'll grab our interior panel here and pull back. Now on our 12 volt outlet, we'll press down on the tab at the top and pull to disconnect the socket and we can set our panel aside. Now we need to remove our fuse box here by removing the 10 millimeter nut. We'll now lift up on the fuse box and pull it out of the way and just swing it to the side. With the fuse box out of the way, we now have a similar stud with a 10 millimeter nut on it to remove. And here's the nut once we have it off. In each one of our wheel wells, we'll find four T25 Torx screws, just like this one here, that help hold our fascia to our fender liner. So we'll go ahead and remove all four of these. Now we'll remove the two screws that attach our fascia to our trunk pan. And we'll also remove the two screws that hold our hitch cover in place for the factory hitch. Because this panel will not go back on with the hitch in place, so we'll just go ahead and remove it. Now with an extra set of hands, we can remove our fascia. We'll grab it right at the corner where it meets our fender and pull back. We'll have to pull at the corner at our hatch opening to help separate the studs from the vehicle. Okay. And now we have this large wiring harness that's clipped to our fascia on the passenger side of the vehicle. We'll start unclipping it by pulling up on it and unplugging all the sensors that it goes to. These have tabs on them that you can push in with a flathead screwdriver and pull back to separate. Here's the tab for one of them. This sensor here for our rear park assist is very difficult to unplug as is, so we'll undo the torque screws that hold it in place. Okay. That unplugged, we can set it aside. We repeated the same process for all the sensors and connectors on the driver's side of the vehicle and unclipped the harness. Now we can set the harness aside from the fascia and let it hang behind the vehicle and set our fascia aside. Now we have these 16 millimeter bolts here and here on each side that hold our bumper beam in place. We'll go ahead and remove these. With our bolts removed that hold our bumper beam in place, we can now grab it and pull it out of the frame pocket of our vehicle. Before we slide our hitch into position, we're gonna show you the holes in the frame rail that you need to line up with the holes in the hitch on each side. This hole here and the hole just in front of it are where the factory bolts go through the hitch and secure to a weld nut on the bottom of the frame. Now these holes here that are oblong, those are the ones that are gonna line up with the holes in the vehicle. So we'll just take the hitch and slide it in position. Now we'll take our side rail bracket, place it over the holes, take our factory bolts that we removed and reinstall them. We 
make sure we get them started a few turns by hand before we try to tighten them with any tools. And now we'll torque our bolts to the amount specified in the instructions. All right, now with an extra set of hands, we'll get our fascia back in proper position and reconnect all of our wiring. Now we'll guide our fascia around our hitch. All right, with it around our hitch now, we can reinstall the fascia. Now we'll reinstall all of our fasteners that secure our fascia and all the other items we had to remove in order to get the fascia off. And that completes our look at and showing you how to install the Draw Tight Class 3 trailer hitch receiver, part number 75940 on this 2017 Audi SQ5.